It's the Score North Twin Show. And gentlemen, reckless speculation. It's speculation season because we're three weeks away from the trade deadline and the Twins have to make a decision. Do they buy or add like we kind of talked about yesterday? We did the Paul Goldschmidt conversation yesterday and then it turned into should they just fire Rocco to spark the team conversation? (laughs) But there's another conversation about whether they should maybe look in the mirror and, you know, trade some assets that could turn into assets that can help them for the future. Mm -hmm. But uh, you have stumbled into the second episode on this relaunch of the Scorner Twins show here. You're home for Minnesota Twins therapy, where we just want the Twins to win a damn playoff game at some point for the first time since 2004. So before we get into sort of the opposite of what we talked about yesterday as we pose different theories and ways for the Twins to move forward here. How do you guys feel now that we've uh, we've we've reignited the Scorn Our Twins show after a two-year hiatus? We appreciate We saw it. It went from being dormant for two years to uh, charting 88th on the Apple baseball podcast charts yesterday. That's right. It is the 88th most listened to baseball podcast in America after just one episode back. How do you guys feel? I feel very, very good about it. Mm-hmm. And in fact, I think it just proves uh, again that the Score North listeners are some of the best. That they put us in the top 100 after the podcast had been gone for two years. We just yeah, had right a really there with good like a season. Mets and an Orioles podcast. Yeah. I see. We had a really good season at High A, and we're already on the top 100 prospect list. That's basically right. what happened. We had a good month. We had a good. We had one good day even at High A, and now all of a sudden we're on the top 100 Boom. prospect list. Promote it. It's yep. great. Yes. So let's get into it here, boys. And we'll get to, uh, we'll try to mix in some feedback here. We'll dive into the comments section. And there's a special new Immaculate Grid, much to our surprise, that we can do today. Mm-hmm. And this, uh, by the way, this, this this probably won't be a daily Twins show. It just so happens that we're going back to back here. You de- you're definitely going to get the Monday State of the Twins and then uh, some assorted episodes between the Mondays. So if you could give us a five-star rating and a positive review on Apple Podcasts, and click the like button and the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. And Declan, if we could actually get the twin show branding here too, because our graphics team worked all night, a couple nights ago, to get twin show branding here. Um, we discussed yesterday the possibilities for jolting this team, right? Fire Rocco, make a push for Paul Goldschmidt, whatever. Yep. So today on the flip side, let's have the other hard conversation, which is should the Twins be sellers in three weeks? What would it take for the Twins to say, you know what? (sighs) We're just struggling to stay above 500. I know we're close in the division, but it's a bad division. It's just not. We kind of wasted the pitching in the first half of the season. What would conditions need to look like for you to sell in the next three weeks? And is Sonny Gray like the old, like Sonny Gray to me is sort of the, you can't really trade Buxton. You're not going to trade Correa after the contract and you can't the hubbub with the ankle and stuff or any has a no trade clause. No, no right? trade. That, yeah. Buxton and Carlos both have no trade clauses. Yep. So like if you decided to sell, it's possible Sonny Gray would be your only real tradable veteran asset. But what would it take for you to get there mentally with this Twins team? Well, it's not very hard if they're not going to, if nothing is going to change. So if they're not going to do something and we've talked about possibilities, trades, managerial change. If they're going to do nothing and maintain the status quo, I think by August it's going to become very clear that is it that it is in your best interest to trade Sonny Gray. This isn't un. In fact, it's it's a better example. This isn't unlike in some ways the Korea thing last year, which Phil was on the whole time, which is. Trade him like you're not that good. You're not going to be that good. And sure enough, they fell out out of contention. The season ended up being an extreme disappointment. And the reality is this. If you had wanted Correa back, and I think that he likes it here. If you had had wanted him back, he was going to leave you, which he tried to do first for the Giants and then for the Mets. And then he's like, no one will take me. And the Twins are like, we'll take you back. So the Twins could have easily gotten Carlos Correa back and had assets for him. 
people in laugh, the case by of, the way. People, it was very hard for case, me, okay? People laughed at me for suggesting oh, you should we see my timeline right. from yesterday between my Carl Anthony Towns <laughs> and Fire Rocco. You are I, a bully, okay? You need to, you need to I calm was, it down. I was absolutely torched by a lot of people on Twitter. Very, very hurtful <laughs> for me. Um, but if you're going to do nothing, if you're going to stand pat and be like, this will work itself out, then I think by the deadline it's going to become very clear that Sonny Gray should be traded. And here's why I would tr uh, trade him too. If Rocco's coming back, there's no way Sonny Gray is. It's very clear that, and it probably goes beyond Baldelli. So if the Twins are still going to be run status quo as they currently are, then I think Gray is going to walk for sure. So I would rather get something for him. And, and I do think, uh, I've been doing some deduction here, because I think I know how the Twins work now. They get very cute. They basically, no, no matter how bad things get at times, think that they're going to outsmart the system. Here's what I think. And this guy's pitching well now, so it's the temptation is going to increase. I think there's a chance that they move Gray and replace him with Dallas Keiko. As Interesting. stupid as that sounds, Dallas Keiko, like why did they sign him? I'm going to go full windy here. We got windy, did, wind, full windy, windy why fingers. We got the windy sign, fingers. Like, why did Dallas Keuchel come here? And I know he's like, well, the Twins are a good. That's eh, a bunch of crap. They something transpired with an opportunity there. But yes, I would trade Sonny Gray if you are going to do nothing. Then I think your something should be to move an asset who's going to leave you. So I I, I do think that the the Dallas Keuchel flyer. And Sonny Gray live in separate rooms. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm here for your little windy conspiracy theory. But yeah, thank you. I think I I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't read like anything conspiratorial into it. That hey, Dallas Keuchel seems to have been working his ass off to get some more uh, velocity on his fastball and some more break on some of his off speed stuff. Whatever. Let's give him a flyer in the minor leagues. By the way, he's given up one earned run in uh, three starts so far for the Saints. He has walked eight guys in 14 innings. So I don't know if that's going to play well when you get promoted to the major leagues, but I do think that can operate separately and they might wind up needing him anyways. If like Kenta Maeda or, I mean, it's not like they have an ironclad bottom of the rotation. So we'll see. So this actually just came across. Uh, I, I Googled Sonny Gray just to see what was going on too. So at the all-star at the home run derby yesterday, Dohung Park of MB.com posted this story on Sonny Gray. The headline is, All-Star Gray Mull's future, quote, wouldn't shock me if I didn't play anymore after this year. Oh, like so, done playing? So Sonny Gray in this article said, quote, it wouldn't shock me if I didn't play anymore after this year. Wouldn't shock me at all. Do I want to? Do I think I can? Absolutely. And I can at a very, very high level. It's not about the money. It's whether you still enjoy it and does your family enjoy it. He went on to also say, quote, the running joke with me was that I was always, oh, I'll play 10 years and I'm done and I'm out this mug. Everyone that knows me from back then, they give me crap now saying, oh, you're still done. So there might even be like a layer over here where Sonny Gray, he's in his 30s, he's played 10 years, he gets to the 10-year service time mark in MLB Baseball and the Players Association, and then he just leaves? Personally, I would keep Sonny Gray. I would I would just keep him here um, unless the Twins literally go in the complete tailspin, which is obviously still a possibility over these next few weeks. I would keep Sonny Gray. I, I I personally don't know if it's worth shelling him out unless someone really overwhelms you with a big prospect. Well, I think like his uncertainty about whether he plays beyond this season. I don't know that that impacts this for me. No, unless I'm because because it's right. not like like a t he his his contracts up. It's really interesting that he just. You know, he's having one of the best seasons of his career and he's talking about retiring. But I think for me, it would be more about, do you think you need, if, like, is this your last hurrah in a win now window? Do you, do you have enough pieces right now? Because th they certainly don't have that many, like we were talking about the Goldschmidt thing yesterday, but you'd literally have to cobble up the last vestiges of your top 10 prospects to make a trade of that kind. And they probably say no, if there's five other offers on the table. So this is kind of your team now. And you're hoping that maybe like Royce Lewis can get back and be healthy. And Alex Kirilov can, you know, avoid wrist problems the next couple seasons. 
if you decided, hey, objectively, even though we, you know, we we built this thing to win, it's just not. We're not going to go deep in the playoffs or anything. Is Sonny Gray a valuable enough trade asset to try and like restock the cupboards that you've emptied? I mean, look, you got to. So I was looking up on MLB Pipeline today. The Twins farm system is bottom 10 in Major League Baseball. It's like right around, it's like 20th. Yeah. So, you know, in the last couple of years, and I understand why they made these trades. A lot of these trades have not worked for them, but I understand the thinking behind, hey, let's go, man. We've got a nucleus here. We got good young players. A couple of years ago, you had Miguel Sano still, right? Like you thought he was going to be something. You thought Max Kepler was going to be better and Buxton was going to be healthy, all these things. And so that's why you trade away Spencer Steer and two other good young players for uh, for a Tyler Malley, right? By the way, Christian Encarnacion Strand is destroying AAA right now. And there's no place for him with the Reds. Yes. It's just, incredible. So Spencer Steer is contributing to a good Reds team, and then and then uh, CES, as they call him, is knocking on the door. And then Brent Rooker was part of the Paddock deal, so he was among your top 10 prospects. You've, you've now traded, uh, I believe it's six young or relatively young pitchers in both the Jorge Lopez and Michael Taylor trades from the last 12 months. So like, and I get it, let's empty the cupboards and let's try and stockpile chips on this table to win now. But you combine the emptying of your cupboards with the current top 10 prospects, mostly all of their stocks are falling. Like Brooks Lee having a good season, Austin. These are guys in your top 10 who are either injured or badly struggling. Austin Martin, Connor Prelip, Simeon Woods Richardson, David Festa, Emmanuel Rodriguez, Noah Miller, Jose Salas. Like, that's like seven. Did I just list seven guys of your top 10 prospects? So, and Prelip's out now. He's hurt now. So, correct. he's done. Yep. So, if you're looking at this and saying, all right, well, what do we have? You got to do something. I don't think you can do nothing. I think you have to, have to pick a path. Either right. cobble together what you can. And go win a bad division and take advantage of the pitching and push forward and add a bat, right? But if you don't have the stomach to do that, you you should you should do the other thing. But there's but the only guy on the team that could get you like a couple really good prospects back is Sonny Gray. So I just it's gonna be a really interesting three weeks here to decide which path to choose if you're Derek Falvey and Thad Levine. But the problem is this. So you you have to go back through that list. You have traded a lot of top prospects in deals that for the most part have not worked out. And now your your farm system's depleted and you've done nothing. You know, top of mind, the one trade that comes to mind as being a really good trade was the Nelson Cruz trade. And that was a dump trade. And in, unless you, you go back to the Duran trade uh, from, I think, the Diamondbacks. But that's now what? That's when Paul was still here in like 18. So yeah. the fact is all of these like, our window is open now. Trades have not really worked out. And the problem also is this. If you go get Goldschmidt, as we talked about, or try to go get Goldschmidt, as we discussed yesterday, there's a fighting chance that you just don't have enough now. Um, but if you're not going, but my biggest thing is this. The Twins haven't shown any so far in a year in which their pitching has been for them phenomenal. They haven't shown any inkling to do anything proactive to say, we've got to get this going other than Derek Falvey saying it's up to the guys in that room. Well, at some point in time, you have to say the guys in that room are having bad years. Like you can't just be like the light goes on. You can do that in April for May, right? Or yeah. May for June. I think once you get to June though, it's very hard to say, Hey, look, it's going to be fine. And so if you're going to do nothing, if you are basically going to cross your fingers uh, and click your heels together and say, hope, 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 then I would rather trade gray and begin to restock the system because, and the other thing that's very interesting about, so, so gray's quotes are, are this and Phil, we, we both covered sports and athletes enough to read between it, the lines that reads like a guy who hates his current environment. The yeah. old, I might walk away. Okay. Yeah. First of all, you're an all-star dude. Um, and second of all, like we both covered guys, like you can tell. And in, in this case, we don't get the tone, but, you know, there's been a lot of guys who are like, this year is dragging on me. I might retire. And then they move and they're like, oh, I'm good. Right. Now. Yeah. Then you get then you get to the San Francisco Giants or something. Yeah. And it's like, I'm oh, good. this is awesome. Yeah. I mean, and, and he and that's not you're not just like throwing something out there. I mean, Sonny Gray has been vocal multiple times the last two seasons about 
the way that the organization has sort of held him back innings wise. Now there's also some look in the mirror stuff like, Hey man, yeah. if, if you want to be out there a third time through the order, then don't get shelled a third time through the order. But, yes. but it, yeah, it is, it's all a very interesting stew that's sort of brewing here. So can, can we talk about um, this too? Because I got this pushback uh, during the loss on Sunday. I tweeted that if this is going to be, if the status quo is going to be it, I, I would trade gray. And I got a bunch of comments back saying, that's really stupid because they will get more if they tender Gray the qualifying offer and allow him to walk. Okay, they will get compensation, assume, assuming I think the, the rule is that he's still signed by June 1st, which I would expect him to be. But that being said, there's no rule that you don't that you're not going to get more in return in a trade. Mm -hmm. So, like I guess I don't I didn't understand. I, I get the pushback, and yes, you should not end up with nothing. But that being said, if your path is, yeah, we're sort of toast here. We're just going to ride the, the wave out. I would rather take Gray to market. I'm not sure about you guys. I'd rather take him to the market and see what I could potentially get as opposed to, you know, what, a late round, first round pick? I'd rather get prospects if I could. Well, what would – so – I'm not taking the market right now. I want the next three weeks to, right. to play out. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I agree. I want to see. Agree. I guess. I guess the biggest question is if you're kind of just sitting in the exact same spot. Let's say you're like a game at three weeks in the future when the trade deadline. It's August first, I believe, this year. And and you're a game behind Cleveland. You're a game or two under 500, and it's just kind of more of the same. Do you bet on that team? Do you take future assets and bet on that team? Or do you punt like they did, by the way? I mean, we brought this up in 2017. They were, so I found it. They were three games under 500 in 2017, seven games back in the division when they decided. Now, it's funny, when they made the trade for Jaime Garcia initially, they were like one game back in the division. And then they had the week from hell. They lost a bunch of games that week. And I, I think it was Cleveland they were chasing won a bunch of games. They went from a game back to seven games back and right. they punted on deadline day by trading their closer, Brandon Kinsler. And then they, they shipped Jaime Garcia back out after one start. But then the, then the clubhouse got pissed and Molitor sure. and Brian Dozier. And those guys were like, what you guys are punting on us. This is ridiculous. And the front office, I think at the time, rightfully so was like, you guys are seven games behind in the division. We got you a we we bought for you and then you lost five straight games like screw you guys right yeah and they wound up sort of using that fuse to to push them so it's a very very similar situation to 2017 right now and they punted in 2017 I think, and here's my thing too okay if you do punt and and to, and to that example it pissed people off and actually sort of worked um so I think that you can look at 2017 as being somewhat instructive. To yeah. what people can do when challenged. And by the way, that's a change. Like, that's the type of thing that team got a kick in the ass. It's like, screw you. Well, good. Okay. You show me. And they sort of did. Um, or you can look at last year, where again, we, we were all like, this team's not that good, but they remained in first place. The division was terrible. Right. And then they sort of rode the whole thing out and slowly but surely just fell out of contention. So I would far rather trade because I'm not saying clean house to your point, Phil, you can't even clean house. I am just saying that if trading an unhappy player who's not coming back, who now, you know, according to what Declan read is actively talking about retirement, probably partially because he hates it here. Um, I would rather challenge the team and have guys say, screw you. We'll show you. Cause if anything, this team needs, and this is what's driving me crazy. This team needs a kick in the ass. And to Judd's point of the comp pick thing, so the comp pick right would be like somewhere between the like the forty fifth pick right in the draft. Is that what the you comp pick? Look at what I, I forget be. what the what the compensate. It's usually isn't it between the like sand, the sandwich round starts after the first round. First round. So, so it's like it's picks between the first and second rounds. And I'll be honest, I I'd have to read up on like what exactly yeah. they would be getting. Yeah. So you'd probably would get potentially a pick between like let's just say thirty and sixty if you gave him the qualifying offer and he signs another team you get that other teams you know or you get a qual you get that pick between thirty and sixty right or to Judd's point you sell them and you get maybe an organization's fourth best prospect and twelfth best prospect would you rather take the chance that hey some of these prospects who have already been in the minor leagues before who already established and climbing up their respective organizations charts are those guys better results than or better options than you know taking a guy with a higher ceiling who would be you know like a 55th overall draft pick so you probably would have a higher ceiling than those two guys theoretically 
but I'm with Judd that I would rather get more and I'd rather get a couple things and force a team into a situation where they actually have to overpay and I get one of their top five prospects instead. So here's the, you want the official rules here? Because they, they've kind of redone this a couple times. So here's yeah. based on the latest CBA. So compensation for, for losing players who reject the qualifying offer. So you say, Sonny Gray, uh, we may or may not, well, you may or may not play again, but we may or may not be interested in a long-term contract. But for now, here is a qualifying offer, which is, it's a, I don't know what it is this year, like $20 million, one year, whatever. If a team gives a qualifying offer to a player who then signs elsewhere or if he just flat rejects it in the case here because he might retire, right? So if he just yep. rejects it, it's it's the rejection, not the signing out. But, well, I guess let me read on here. The club that lost the player is eligible for draft pick compensation. If the team that loses the free agent is a revenue-sharing recipient, which we'll get to in a second, based on its revenues and market size, then the selection, if and only if the lost player signs for at least $50 million, will be awarded oh. a pick between the first round and the comp balance round A, of the 2022 MLB draft. If the player signs for less than $50 million, the compensation, this is a total contract value, by the way, the compensation pick for those teams would come after the competitive balance round B, which follows the second round. So if either first or second round pick, a fairly high pick. Uh, last year, the Twins did qualify for one of these picks. If a team that loses the player does not receive revenue sharing, and did not exceed the luxury tax threshold, its comp pick will come after competitive balance round B. So basically, like, you get a fairly high draft yeah, pick yeah. If, he, if he walks. So Right, but I would prefer prospects if, if possible. The other thing that Gray, though, so this is really intriguing the more thought I give this. The other thing that we have to keep in mind now is if he's going to threaten to walk away, I don't think a team's going to try and sign him then and lose a comp pick. So, like, if he really is threatening to, like, I'm done here, like, that, cha- that, that I think, gives you more incentive to trade him. Oh. So, I mean, just to get out of the weeds here for, for a second, because that's a sort of a, a, like the, the way baseball has the comp pick and the it's qualifying. It's easy to understand. Things, so. I don't know what you're talking about. Baseball makes everything simple, Phil. <laughs> I think it makes, like, fans' heads explode. Um, but, like, this is what they face here in the next three weeks. Do you put chips on this table or do you look to, I think the worst thing you can do is do nothing. The worst thing you can do is, but I, but I have a feeling cause they kind of last year, like I guess they did make the Mally trade last year. So they, like they did add pitchers last year and, and the Lopez edition. So they picked a lane last year, but the worst thing you can do is just sort of like cross your fingers and hope here. Any, so before we get to some of the, uh, the feedback from the comment section and an immaculate grid, any other thoughts on, going into the next three weeks for the twins. I'm confident that they, they will be in in a place where it will make more sense to trade him because I don't see them shaking things up. And if they're not going to, I would far prefer to try to get assets back for gray. And just as importantly, you know what, again, if it pisses them off, good. This team deserves to be pissed off, especially the bats. Like they does, they deserve to be shaken up. It's ridiculous. Um, So yes, I would, I think the guy is miserable here. I think it goes far beyond Baldelli. So it's not just fair to, to say, well, if Rocco was gone, I think Gray fundamentally, it feels like disagrees with the twins pitching philosophy, right or wrong. So I feel like in three weeks, it would behoove them to look to try and restock a farm system that they have depleted and unfortunately done so without getting nearly enough return. You guys behoove is an underrated word, by the way. <laughs> Like more people should say. I do enjoy be, it. Thank be you. It is an interesting part of their schedule here because they're going to go to Oakland, who is terrible. Then they're in Seattle for four. Then they host the Whiteys, who have been terrible for three. Then the Mariners actually come here again afterwards. And then they have the Royals, the Cardinals, who are bad. They had the Tigers a ton in August. I think we're probably going to be able to see by like the classic MLB trade deadline stuff. How are you playing by, by about 72 hours before the deadline? Yeah. And that'll probably tell us where they're gonna, what they're gonna do. Right, but don't be fooled though, because like that, that's that's a problem. If you beat up on bad teams, because the schedule has good teams left after the deadline, I think you need to have a a realistic outlook of what your team can also do against good teams. But but Judd, if they beat up on bad teams and build a five game lead in the division, and they still have one of the five best pitching staffs, like. You should go, go then, go do, go 
go win the division and go into the playoffs with a top five pitching staff. Yeah, you disagree? No you disagree with that notion? I disagree. That win, like, that I, win in division with a top five pitching staff, go to the playoffs and see what happens. I think if you, I think if you created a path to do that by making moves, yes, I have no faith here. I, I would rather see them dump off a pitcher who will get them something. I look, my trust is gone. My trust is gone, and a few wins against the A's, Royals, and White Sox is not going to restore my faith. My faith in this administration, much like a politician, my faith in the current administration, you guys, is completely eroded and gone. Yeah, and, and right. mine is mine is not very high either. But if the but if the stated goal here for us and for the franchise is go win a playoff game. If you beat up on bad teams and win a bad division and go into the playoffs with a top five pitching staff, guess what you can do for the first time since 2004? Win a playoff, a playoff game. game. Or lose two to one. Well, that's, that's, you, could, yeah. you could do that too. Yeah. <laughs> or you could just uh, call Cody Finch, Finch Home Solutions, and Fix get your lineup. home get your home in order. Get your home straightened out. I've lost all faith in the Twins brass, but when it comes to my friends at Finch Home Solutions, I have nothing but faith that when that van pulls up in front of your house for an for an electrical <laughs> issue, big or small, you could be rewiring your whole house. You could be having a light fixed, something <laughs> outside, perhaps. The Cody Finch, they're gonna. Get, in fact, you know what? Sound the Gallahorn, right? Because when that when that truck pulls up and Cody Finch and his team oh. get out. They are, it's as good as a defensive line coming out and taking care of whatever needs to be taken care of in your house. Their technicians are, are, are courteous. They are very, very quick. They are extremely efficient. 24-hour service available. It's this simple. Finch Home Solutions, 612-357-2604 or call them. FinchHomeSolutions.com. You can fill out a form. You never have to talk to anybody until they show up, in which case they're going to do a great job. FinchHomeSolutions.com. And as always, tell them that the uh, guys at Score North sent you and told you that Cody, Cody was an all-star player. Uh, also, hey, our friends at Power Lodge and Miller Marine have over 300 pontoons in stock this summer. The Benningtons are uh, especially popular. It's actually Miller Marine in St. Cloud is the largest Bennington dealer in the country. But you can find Power Lodge locations in Brainerd, Anamia, and Ramsey. And Miller Marine in St. Cloud. Get whatever you need for that throttle therapy. PowerLodge.com or MillerMarine.com. Boys, let's continue forward here. Let's dive into the comment section. You can always hit us up in the YouTube comment section on Twitter, which has become kind of a cesspool of twins conversation. People hate me. I feel like, well, people hate, people hate, I think. People don't like me. People hate the fact that you're uh, a truth teller sometimes. They don't know that they need the truth, but the sports dad no, always clearly, gives, gives clearly you your broccoli don't. when you need it. Clearly they don't know that. Uh, and you can hit us up via the feedback tab in the Score North app to where we stockpile these throughout the week. So um, Mark John says off our Goldschmidt conversation yesterday, you traded away a rise in his prime after a batting title for pitching, and now you want to trade pitching for a washed-up old man who has seen his best years? I wouldn't call Ooh. Goldschmidt a washed-up old man, by the way. No. Um, what's, what are your thoughts on just the hypocritical notion of trading a rise? First of all, well, I don't know that we wanted that trade to happen. So you're talking about two different things. You're talking about what the front office did and then what we are talking about. I wanted that trade to happen, I will say. Okay. I was okay with that. I was fine I with the trade, am. but but I think like the notion of having to trade a really yes. good young hitter under team control because you right. don't have internal pitching well, options is a problem. But the circumstances yeah. are what they are right now, and you might need to trade for a bat. So like that's – I mean, if you could get Luis or Eyes right now, it would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but Goldschmidt's Goldschmidt is old, but he's not washed up. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I wouldn't personally make a trade for him, but to call him, you know, to say that, that he is washed up at the end. I mean, statistically he's coming off an NL MVP season last year. He is putting up, you know, rock solid statistics this year. So I, I think that's an unfair accusation to make that the, tr the suggestion of a trade is taking on, you know, a guy who is at the end, I think he's got at least two, if not more, solid years left. So, yeah, I'm I'm not buying that Goldschmidt is a washed-up player that the Twins would be acquiring. 
And Goldie's really good. Um, OBP machine, you can make a case. He even could be a Hall of Famer. But yeah. I'm also not buying the fact that teams are just going to give a ton for him. Now, if St. Louis doesn't want to give him up for nothing, I that's a different conversation. If, if there's a bar that St. Louis has that's we're not accepting anything less than three of your top five prospects, that's on St. Louis. But I don't think a team that's going to acquire them is going to pay that price either. I really don't. I think someone's going to pay a decent price. But this notion of multiple top 100 prospects for a guy who is 35 going on 36, even with the reasonable deal to me, is too steep to do. Yeah, I, I think I, I generally agree that the name Paul Goldschmidt and the career Paul Goldschmidt probably is larger than the the haul that you would get at this point. Um, but man, even if you had to put together like, hey, who are your what's your what's your best two prospect offer? And there's other there's five other teams in the mix. I mean, you would have it'd be like Brooks Lee and a pitcher. Right like Araya or somebody, and it would it would kind of gut you. It would, and but I'm but I'm here for it. Let's go. We talked about this with Royce today. If you're not willing to like at this point, if you're in a position where you can't make a move to push forward and add to this team, then what are we doing here? Like from a front office perspective, That's then, a great to me, then to me, the era has run its course. Yes, you should. You're you're already this far. You got Correa here, highly paid. You know Buxton. Who knows how long he's going to even be able to bat? Right. I mean, Royce Lewis will come back and be healthy, hopefully, for the last month and a half of the season. If you can't add to this collection, then what are we doing here is kind of my macro question. Yeah, well, and I mean, this is where, for all we have heard people scream team control, you guys, this is also where the Paddock trade, the Mally trade, I guess to a certain d degree, although it's probably past the statue of limitations at this point, the Sam Dyson trade. But when you look at what this team has given up to try and be competitive, which by the way, we all agree, you know, when the timing is right, go for it. Uh, the problem now is this though. So Dex might be right. The Cardinals might not get the haul back for Goldschmidt that they expect, but you know what they want back? They want young arms and Bailey Ober ain't getting that trade done and they don't have, and that's the problem. Now they're depleted on young arms. So like, you're going to have teams, e even if the return is below what the Cardinals expect and they swallow hard and accept it, you're going to have teams that are going to send pitching to the Cardinals, which is what they desperately need, and the Twins can't compete now because of previous moves as well. Yeah. That's the thing is, I think the answer to your question, Phil, is we have no idea what they're doing here. Uh, Brian Darling says, love that you guys brought back the Scorner Twins show. They need to make some big changes. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate you, man. Uh, Chris Vernig says one interesting paradox with the twins is that while the 2021, 22 and 23 clubs aren't even remotely as bad as several other twins teams have been over the last 30 years, it sure feels like frustration is at an all time high and overall likability is at an all time low for, uh, for a great many fans. Yeah. I mean, Dex speak to that. Yeah. I, there is some weird still Twins defenders, mostly also that fall in the same vein as Score North haters. But at the same time, I think the overall vibe of the Twins is down. For the like, I love baseball and I've loved the Twins. And I am at a point for the last basically three years where I, I they make me so upset, so frustrated, which is weird because, you know, when you really boil it down, like, why don't the Vikings make me that upset? Why don't the Wild make me that upset? Uh, two teams that I also get very upset by, by, you know, falling short of expectations. But with the Twins, it's this, it's just this weird bravado of like, no, 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 we're the engi little engine that could and we're trying our absolute best. It's like, well, you're not, you're actually not. You're not trying your absolute best and you're kind of gaslighting a lot of us to to make you like you. And it it makes me infuriated. I can't stand it. So I, I feel like at the end of the Spielman Zimmer era it felt like this from a viking standpoint but now they've got and we still don't know but now they've got people in control where it's like okay i can at least go along with with this and and i think that o'connell is a good coach like i think i i believe that now it's i agree one year i believe the same thing about rocco after 2019 so i could be corrected eventually but and for as much as the wild can drive me crazy i think bill Guerin knows what he wants to do um, I think that the Wolves, the Conley Gobert trade was a bad trade, but as Phil has talked about a ton of late, they've also made some really smart moves and like they're, they're getting second round picks who contribute and they have at least, it looks like two tracks. 
The Twins feel like the team now that's like, no, 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 go away. We know what we're doing. No, you know, team control and blah, blah, blah. And I don't even know, in my opinion, if it's the little engine that could as much now as it is this sort of condescending, we've got this. And again, it goes back to Phil's question. Okay, that's cool. You've got this. What are you doing? And they're like, stay out. We're the adults here. We know. So I think they drive you crazy. And Dex, for you, you had, what, a partial season ticket package last Uh year, right? And like they tried to recruit you back. And if they had given you reason to come back before your move, you probably go back. Yeah, but they pissed you off enough that you just gave up. So, like, I I feel like this team is in the business of pissing its fan base off, and the defenders can't make the realistic people overlook that. If I could simplify it, I would say this team strikes out more than any team in baseball history, which is not fun to watch, right? It's infuriating to watch. Yep. This team is wasting one of the great, at least three month stretches of pitching in my life watching this team, covering this team, being a fan of this team. There's not really a marketable, lovable figure that represents this team. Royce Lewis is the closest thing, but he can't stay on the field. There's not a Joe Maurer before the injuries, a Kirby Puckett. Like who, you know, even Justin Morneau is kind of a quiet, stoic, consistent, power-hitting presence, right? There's just, they, they just, they don't have the same... DNA traits and likability, even like, you know, some of those twins teams in the early 2000s could, they could be a little annoying from time to time because they lack the big power bat or maybe they pitched to contact too much or whatever. But at the end of the day, you knew that those teams were going to play their asses off. They won. They had a fiery, lovable manager who was going to yeah. stand up for his guys, right? And you had, yeah, and they, and they won a bunch of games. You know, they sort of had their twins way, which got, which got mocked after a while and kind of grew stale. But I don't know what it is you sink your teeth into with this franchise right now. Like, what is the, well, like, what is it? I also think that among the four teams, the four men's pro teams that we talk about the most on our shows, I also think the twins right now are by far and away the most uh, guilty of blatant gas lighting. I feel like there's this whole thing about like you had to, if, if you deconstruct the arise trade, and Lopez is a good pitcher, okay? But let's deconstruct that for one second and say, okay, why are people pissed? Like, they got a really all-star, at least right now, starting pitcher. They're pissed because of this. Derek Falvey arrived with the resume that said, I can find pitching. I'm going to develop pitching. We're going to have a ton of pitching. Yeah. Well, he's been here since 17 now, right? And you literally, in your rotation now, Ober is the only homegrown guy and you had to trade a guy who won a batting title. And, and look, we could talk about batting average from here until. Well, he also comes. he also leads the league in on base percentage. Yeah, is... but I mean, he does a lot of things really well. Like you developed a guy who does a lot of things well. You had to trade him for a starting pitcher, which was supposed to be your forte. Gaslighting. Because we're always told, well, they had to make that trade. Not if they develop pitching, yeah. they don't. So um, there's there's some more comments here too. I think we'll we'll do another episode. I'm guessing later this week, but we'll keep stockpiling your feedback and your comments. And Love the show, yeah, we'll get we'll give you guys a voice. If you're frustrated, you have a right to be frustrated. I don't think this should just turn into a bitch session for 40 minutes every time we do a score on our twin show. But right now, I think after the 15 to two loss on Sunday, and uh, being behind the Guardians, it's yeah. very obvious something. how most fans feel. Do something. Poke yeah. that. You know. That that meme, do something. <laughs> like I'll I'll be happy if they do something. Do stuff. This isn't that tough. It's sports. It's not rocket science. Yeah. Uh, boys, it's time for another immaculate grid challenge here on the Scornar Twin Show. <laughs> so a couple things. I told you guys off mic the following information. The Immaculate Grid has been acquired by sportsreference.com, which Jeez. operates baseball reference, basketball reference, hockey reference, all those reference pages, which is awesome. There have been uh, a few tweaks to the Immaculate Grid. I will explain these in just a little bit. Um, so the statistics bar, you weren't able to see that, I believe, till after you finished. Now you can do it, and it will tell you how many... So, like, for example, we have wow. Dodgers and Astros. There's 90 players that work for Dodgers and Astros. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's new. Also, oh, that's, wow, okay. 
Uh, also, a new thing. If one of the stats is a rate stat, batting average, ERA, etc., the player must have qualified for the season's rate statistical leaderboard. Okay. So that's so you also can't just a, a pick a guy feature. that had uh, went one yeah. for three or something. Okay. Yep. So those are new features. So today on the Immaculate Grid, we from left to right. I'll go from left to right. We need a Dodger and an Astro, a Dodger and a Met, yeah, a so. Dodger who had at least two hundred plus hits in a season. Okay. From the middle grid, we need a Yankee and an Astro, a Yankee and a Met, and a Yankee who had two hundred plus hit season. On the bottom grid, we need a Philly with a Astro, a Philly with a Met, and a Philly with a 200 hit season. Love it. All right, and I know in the past we've we've gone for like the lowest, the like the rarity score. But after, yeah. after yesterday, we're Bob just going Feller for the right. Kind of shook me so. Just yeah, try and be it, right. Let's just try to be as right as possible here. Right. Okay. So Mike Piazza as a Met Dodger, Dodger. Right. Let's do that. Oh, by the way, five minutes on the clock. Okay. Five minutes on the clock starting now. Here we go. Okay. Um, um you can go Zach Greinke for Astro Dodger. Okay. Right, unless you guys sure. have someone well, else. Let's in just mind pick up there. let's pick up the W. Okay. Let's pick up the W. Let's take the victories where they come. Yeah. What are the percent? Can you can tell us the percentage? Uh, yes. So Granky's a thirty four percent, Piazza oh. a twenty one percent. Oh, that's not Oh wow, bad. that's lower than okay. I thought it would be okay. for a Yankee Astro could be Garrett Cole, unless you guys have a less obvious one. Oh, how about uh, Roger oh, Clemens? I got uh um Andy Pettit. Oh, I like that one. Okay. Let's go Andy Pettit. Just cheating to get 6%. back faster from injury. Oh, 6%. nice. How nice. about for a, a Philly and an Astro? How about Roy Oswalt? I was. That's got to be below 10%, right? 22%. Uh-oh. Oh, wow. On a Roy Oswalt. That's a, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yankee and a Met. Um, we, uh, did Strawberry play for the Mets? I mean, oh, for the God, Yankees. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yes. Right? Yep, yep, yep. Joe Strawberry played for both. Good call. Eleven percent. Okay. Oh wow, that's uh, low. That's weird. So Oswald is high. The Strawberry is low. That's because that's because Oswald is twenty years newer, basically. Yeah, newer. Right? Ten years newer. <laughs> yeah, so younger. Straw was filling a Met. Do we have any Philly and a Met? Um, um Met and a Philly. Finkel and I know. Oh, um, uh, uh, who, who's the pitcher? Dykstra? Zach? Lenny Dykstra. Him, yep. I, I was going to... Who's the pitcher that signed that the Twins were trying oh, to... Oh, Wheeler. Zach Wheeler? Zach Wheeler let's or go, Dykstra. Let's go, let's go old school. Let's go yeah, Lenny Dykstra. Yeah, and I think you're. I think that's going to be lower because of the time pass. Lenny okay. Dykstra. Yep. Well, Five, nine, nails. Nails, nine we call them. Nine percent. Yeah. Let's go. Nice. All right, I need 200 let's hitters, go. which I think... And these are for the team. For the, there's yes, been some confusion for, that like yeah, it's got to so, they have to have had 200 hits with that team. Yep, that's another thing that it, it mentions here. So like the player must have a recorded stat while on the team. In 2017, JD Martinez hit 45 home runs in a split season. He would not match 40 home runs because he hit 16 with Detroit and 29 mm, for Arizona. So it has to be 200 in a season. Oh, so obviously like Derek Jeter, Jeter is an obvious Yankees one. Is yep. there a less obvious one we can? I mean, did Mattingly have a 200 hit season? Sure, he did. I'm sure, he did. He, he, yes, he definitely did. It's good, Jeter. Look, look, we don't want to blow this, do we? We got two and a half minutes left. All right, Jeter. Jeter, yeah. Derek, number two. Derek, Jeter. Uh, How much? What was the percent? Sixty-three. Pete for Rose, fi- right? For Pita. I was even going to say for the Phillies. Jimmy Rollins. That I don't know. I think Jimmy Pete Rose Rollins. had to have. It's a... funny people don't use Pete Rose on here as high of percentage as you would think. Pete yes, Rose. Pete Rose. Let's do Pete Rose. Let's get the W. I call him Charlie Hustle. I'm going to guess it's below 30%. Yeah, 13%. Dude, that's yeah, crazy. because he's, he's not remembered as a Philly. And, and he oh, is again. Yeah. It's your point about what's up. Two, mi- two minutes left, by the way. I, I didn't think of that. The Philly part. I forgot. Oh, okay. And then the Dodgers. We just need a Dodger with 200 hits. A Dodger Gar- with 200 Gar- hits. Did Garvey ever have 200 hits? That I don't know. I Here's one, he but did. man, I don't know if he did it. I think he was too much Mookie power. Sh- Sean Green. Ah, I don't know oh, if he had man, 200. He had of, hate, I'd hate to. Lo- I'd hate to lose. Now, who who are we, we most sure about? Mookie Betts. Last season. Guys last don't get 200 hits as often now, though. I'm trying to think like further back in the day. Like Gary Sheffield was a Dodger for a minute. Mike Piazza oh, no. was a Dodger way back. We already yeah. used him though. And he was. Um, 
I think Hold leadoff on. hitters for those Dodgers teams, even like 10, 15 years ago. Did Brett Butler ever? I was going to say Brett Butler. Brett Butler would be a great pull. We got uh, minute 10. We're good. We're good. Um, wasn't there an epic Dodger walk-off home run in the World Series? Kirk Nine. Gibson, but Kirk. He, I don't think he ever got 200 Did hits. Cody Bellinger have 200 hits when he won the MVP? I, I don't know if, like, it's hard I'm to get. Old Guys don't stuff. get 200 hits anymore. Right. So you got to go, oh, oh, let's go way back. Freaking uh, Jackie Robinson probably had 200 hits in a season. But, oh, but uh, wait, wait, are, are we going to get the Dodgers franchise? That's my question. Is, is it the yes, Los Angeles yes. Dodgers? Um, yep. So that's another we, thing on your credit card. Uh, previous names Ooh. of franchise qualify. Expo players will match for Nationals. Browns match for okay. Orioles. Thank you. Jackie, Jackie Robinson. You guys want to go Jackie? Go way old school. That's really old school. Sure. Oh, we got Let's it. go. Let's go. We got it. Yes. We got it. Immaculate. What's our uh, finish here? What's so Jackie was actually the most common a... answer for Dodgers. So, What was the percentage on Jackie? 52. 52. And what was our overall uh, rareness score? Uh, rarity score was 232. Okay. Well, we should keep track of those two. See if but we like, can get below 100 at some point. These are these are good. So, like, what is... It tells you, oh, interesting. It takes you this whole page. That's not shown on the screen right now. Adrian Beltre would have been a good one for Dodgers. Oh, he, yeah. He did do Third it. Base. Yep. Yep. Because yeah, he, yeah. he started with LA, right? Yeah, Steve Garvey. Only 14, man. See, that's what I was wondering. I thought Garvey did it. Steve Sachs. Steve Sachs. Ooh, I thought of Steve Sachs. I didn't Steve think he Sachs. did it. Sachs. That's hilarious. Sachsy, man. <laughs> Had uh, Knobloch disease eventually. Couldn't throw the first base. Nice work, right. gentlemen. Nice work on the Good stuff. We're back grid. on track. We're back on track. Yep. You know, we might just, we should just, on days we do the twin show, we should just do the Immaculate yeah, Grid until we get sick of it. I think that's a good idea. That's I don't a blast. get sick of it. You just, got, you just got to make sure we know the night before. Otherwise, I will wake up and do the Immaculate Grid. That is my morning routine. And so. sometimes, because be it comes out Eastern time, if you're still awake at 11 yeah, o'clock p.m. Central time, it will refresh. Too. So, so where, where does it come out? Like, where, where do you immaculate find it? Immaculategrid.com. Okay immaculategrid.com interesting okay cool and probably baseballreference.com now because apparently they mm -hmm. bought it so there's your score twin show gentlemen we just want the twins to win a damn playoff game for the first time since 2004 do something see you guys